So I go into the distribution group and we'll make a new distribution group. So we'll say new. This could be a new group or an existing group. I'm going to use a, a new group here. We're going to call it engineering managers. So we'll call this one E-N-G-I-N-E-R-I-N-G M-A-N-A-G-E-R-S and our alias E-N-G-I-N-E-R-I-N-G M-A-N-A-G-E-R-S. No spaces. Put it in an OU. So we'll specify our particular OU. Uh, we'll just put them in production. So we'll say next. And it's made. So like I said, <laughs> not super exciting. But what I want to do is I want to bring up the properties here. Inside the properties, you'll notice that it doesn't have nearly as many tabs as we have as a regular mailbox because there is not a group mailbox. It's not. What this does is it points, it has its members, and it points to the email addresses of the members. That's what it's going to do. This will be sent to an expansion server, and the expansion server's job is to go in and query the Global Catalog server and find out who is a member of this group. Because a group can have user accounts that's a member, they can have other groups that are a member, and you can have multiple nesting and multiple nesting. The good news is, is that if you belong to multiple groups, it's all nested together as a member of this group, you're still only, you're only going to get one copy of the email. So here's our alias, we can have custom attributes, here's the group information, um, who manages it. You can add a manager so that they can add and remove people from the group or, uh, without being an administrator. We have our members. I'm going to go ahead and add somebody. We'll grab this one and this one and this one and this one. So they're all members of this group. Here's something interesting. Membership approval. Membership approval, you can have it so that it's open where anybody can join the group. They can just say, hey, I want to join that group. They can go into their exchange control panel and add themselves to a group. By default, it is closed. The group owner has to allow people to come in. Here's something else that's kind of interesting. We can have owner approval. So it's not just the, uh, the uh, manager, or I'm sorry, if they ask to join, it's going to be rejected automatically. But I can go in and I can say owner approval, where people will still be able to select that they want to be a member of the group, but it has to be approved. And this is sort of like the, um, like LinkedIn. You know, you can go into LinkedIn and you can say, oh yeah, I want to join um, uh, Exchange or I want to join Microsoft Certified. And some of these groups you just join and then you start to receive group mailings. Other ones have to be approved. And so we can say owner approval, approved as uh, when they require or when they request it. Here's something else. Can they leave? By default, anybody can leave anytime they want. And that's kind of different. It used to be that when you set up a group, um, you had to have somebody put you in, and you had to have somebody take you out. The default is, is somebody has to put you in, but you can leave the group at any time. You may want to turn that off so that you have to be removed by the group owner. But it's interesting. By default, you can leave any group you want anytime you want, which is kind of neat. Uh, member of is different than members. Member shows you who belongs to the group. Member of is when I take this group and I make it a member of another group. So even though it's mail enabled, I can have it a member of another group that's also mail enabled, another group that's not mail enabled, another group that is mail enabled. And then if I send it to that one that has all these other people inside of it, the expansion server, the server who's going to go through and query with LDAP queries, Active Directory, uh, Global Catalog Server, it will go through and find everybody's email addresses. Even if it's a group that's a member of a group that is not mail enabled, we will still be able to pull the email addresses out of there because we've mail enabled one of the groups, which means all of the stuff is mail enabled just through this one address. So let me, um, let me illustrate that because I think I, I may have even confused myself. So let me show you. So I have a group, and I have another group, and I have another group, and I have another group and have another group. And this one is a member of this one who happens to be a member of this one who happens to be a member of this one who happens to be a member of this one. If they're security groups, you inherit all the permissions assigned to any of these groups because you're a member of a member of a member of a member of. If I mail enable this guy here, this one's mail enabled, that means that when I email this email address for this particular group, anybody in here who has an email address, including contacts, will receive a copy of that message. I don't have to mail enable each group individually. 
So this makes it really handy because maybe I want to be able to email the finance people, but I want the finance people, they have all sorts of different groups, and instead of having to mail enable each one and figuring out which group I have to mail, just put them all into one group, not the users, the groups, put the groups into one group, mail enable the top level group, and then you can email everybody. So it works out really, really well as far as uh, being able to do that. Here's my email address, engineeringmanagers at contosa.com, same as my alias. Update email addresses automatically. I have some advanced settings like a simple display name. Here's where you can set an expansion server. If you have a group that has a lot of members in it, either because of group nesting or because you just put a lot of members in it, by default, anytime I send an email to that group, the server that's handling the mailbox has to go through and resolve everybody that goes and has to, to push that out. If you have groups that are rather large and you use a lot of group mailings, what you may want to do is specify a particular expansion server. Now this is group by group. So this particular group will say that it's huge and I can set up an exchange server that's just going to be an expansion server. So it goes over there, that server figures out where everybody's going to be and then boom, it's going to go ahead and take care of it for me. So it allows me to go in and um, offload some of the problems. So we'll go ahead and close that. Hide group from the exchange address list. You can still email it. It's security through obscurity. It's just not going to be listed. Uh, any out of office messages can go to the originator. Notice that by default that is turned off. So if I email the group and somebody can't be there, out of office message, that's not going to show up. Out of office messages are just sent away. Send delivery reports to group manager if I have a problem with non-delivery, or I can send them to the message originator. That's the default. So if you send a message to the group and um, we have a non-delivery report, that will go to the uh, organizer by default, or you can say don't deliver. Don't send any delivery reports that's going into here. Here's our mail flow settings. We can have just, oh, I'm sorry. Just like we had before, message size restrictions, simple as that. Delivery restrictions, this is very useful, especially if we have a group that's like all users. <laughs> I remember one guy, we had, a, I think it was a 35, 40,000 person company. He was mad because somebody kept stealing his lunch, so he sent it out to everybody. Message, oh, I'm going to kill the person that stole my lunch. Not that big a deal besides the threat of violence. Not that big a deal, but then you had a reply to all that about half the company don't don't send this to the entire, and so you had five billion messages flying around, somebody stole my lunch. Don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> and that's how you end up with a lot of problems. So what you can do is you can say accept messages from only senders and then specify you know, the executives that can send to this big ginormous mailing list. You can do that, accept messages from all senders. Require that they're authenticated, that's on by default. And uh, Reject messages from no senders or from senders in the following list. So you can either say accept them from everybody but these people, or I can say allow people in this list, and then uh, this is an uh, inclusive model, this is the exclusive model. That's what we have. So I'll hit cancel on that one. Um, we've already gone through general group information. Uh, group information, this identifies who the manager is. We've talked about members. Membership approval, we've done all that. Looks like we've hit every one of these. Email addresses, advanced, yep. Mail full of settings. Oh, message moderation, didn't talk about that one. What message moderation is, is it's, it's not like automatically accept or automatically reject. It's sort of like if you're going to send a mail message out to this group, it has to be approved. Not that you have to be approved, your message has to be approved. That means that when you send it, it's going to go into the moderator's mailbox. The moderator will look at it and say yes or no. If they say no, well, it doesn't get sent to the group. If they say yes, then it does get sent to the group. This is great for moderated discussions or if you just want to control who's sending out the I'm going to kill you for stealing my lunch messages. So you can say it has to be approved by a moderator. Then you would go through and you would select the moderator. Um, these are group moderators. And then we can also have where Certain people, even though it's a moderator group, they're automatically approved. So this is uh, who the moderator is, and these are the people that don't need no stinking moderation. You can do that. Notify all senders when a message isn't uh, approved. Notify a sender in your organization if it's not approved, or just don't notify it. If it's not approved, it just goes away. So you can do that. These are all senders. 
These are senders just in your organization. This is useful because if you have people from the outside who figure out what that email address is, you know what? I'm not going to tell you that it wasn't approved. Hey, but I want you to buy this Rolex watch. Well, it's good to have goals, right? <laughs> We're not going to allow you to do that.